Hey there, we're here with Mark Bonneville at the Paradigm Advanced Research Center and today we're going to learn all about amplifiers. So Mark, can you tell us what the purpose of an amplifier is? Yes, uh, a power amplifier is an electronic unit where a power source gets modulated by the input signal such that the output signal is a larger, more powerful copy of the input. In front of us we have a stereo power amplifier. Can you walk us through the individual components? Uh, yes, stereo means there are two channels and the first thing you have is uh, the power supply that's uh, crucial and we have here two power transformers and we have uh, two rectifiers and some capacitors and that provides DC power source to the amplifier. And then we have the power amplifier themselves and here's a module here. We have the input signal uh, comes in here and then you have the input section, you have a voltage amplification section and then you have a buffer stage for the output devices and here we have eight output devices and then finally the output uh, appears here on these two terminals and that gets connected to the binding post at the back. Looking into this amplifier, I'm noticing these four large pieces of metal. What would these guys do in the process? Yes, those are what's called uh, heat sinks. So they're made of aluminum and they dissipate the, the heat that the amplifier generates because it's not 100% efficient. Taking a look at these capacitors, what do they do? The amplifier is connected to the power line, but that's an AC signal. Uh, what we need is a DC power supply voltage for the power amplifier and what the capacitors do is they filter out the rectified output and provide a very smooth uh, voltage waveform for the uh, amplifiers. Thank you so much Mark. In the next video we're going to be learning about amplifier power, how it's measured and why it matters. So we're back here at the Paradigm Advanced Research Center with Mark Bonneville. Um, Mark, one of the most talked about and advertised features of an amplifier is the output power. How much power do I need in an amplifier and what does that really mean? Electrical power is measured by multiplying the voltage times the current. With audio amplifiers, you really can't use music because the signal is varying all the time. So to specify amplifier power, you really need a continuous signal. So a sine wave is usually used. And the reason for that is because it's a pure tone. And then we know how much distortion the output has. So if you want more power, you could crank it up, but then you'll get more distortion. So you need a reference level. So usually we use 1% or 0.1%, and that's always specified. And usually it's specified into 8 ohms or 4 ohms. Uh, so if you can see on the screen, we have, for instance, uh, uh, a sine wave, and we have 28.28 volts RMS, that's in green, and in pink we have current, and it's about 3.5 amps RMS, and if you multiply the two, you'll get 100 watts, and uh, you see here uh, it's 28.28 roughly. Another way to do this is to do V squared over R. So you do voltage times voltage divided by the impedance, which is 8 ohms, and you'll get the same number. So if I had a 100 watt amplifier like you showed us, what does that mean? Is that too much power, not enough power? How do I make a decision? Uh, in general, you, the more power you have, the better. Uh, however, of course, you need to be mindful of the speakers that you're using. If you have little speakers, you don't want to have too much power because you could damage them. If you have large speakers, you probably need more power. If your power amp is not powerful enough, you could easily clip the amplifier and that could send a lot of energy to your tweeters and you could blow them. Does that mean that my 200 watt amp would be twice as loud as my 100 watt amp? The simple answer is a 200 watt amplifier will not sound twice as loud as 100 watts. It will sound better, it will have more dynamics, will be less likely to clip, will sound cleaner. Uh, but 200 watts is only 3 dB more than 100 watts. Uh, to sound twice as loud, uh, the ear is logarithmic. You'll need like close to 10 dB uh, more power, and that's like close to 1,000 watts. Thank you, Mark. In our next video, we're going to talk more about a term Mark used to describe amplifier power, which was impedance. <laughs> So, Mark, earlier we were talking about um, impedance as it relates to amplifier power. Is impedance the same as resistance?
Resistance is actually a subset of impedance. Impedance is a bit more complex. For instance, uh, on the scope, I have a waveform, I have voltage in green uh, across a resistor, and in pink, I have the current through the resistor. And as I vary the frequency from low to high, you can see that the current always stays in phase with the, uh, the voltage, and the amplitude is always the same. So that's why a resistor is a very good tool to measure amplifiers, because the impedance or its resistance is always the same uh, as a function of frequency. And a resistor uh, only dissipates power, that's all it does, whereas impedance, there's some energy storage involved. So Mark, you mentioned impedance is a lot more complex. Can you give us an example of that? Uh, yes, I can. Uh, we saw what a resistor does. Uh, now I hooked up the amplifier to a loudspeaker. So in green we have uh, the output voltage from the amplifier and in pink we have the current going into the uh, loudspeaker. And you can see they don't line up anymore, they're not in phase. In phase would mean that the peaks would coincide here on the screen. Okay, so it, as I vary the frequency, you can see that the amplitude of the current varies and here it comes in phase and as I go down in, uh, in frequency it goes out of phase and back in phase again. So what it means is that there's energy being delivered to the loudspeaker in this region here but power comes back from the loudspeaker in this region so the interaction between the loudspeaker and the amplifier is uh, complex. So that's quite a big difference. Why would there be such a variance? Uh, yes, let me show you. We have to go down here. So a loudspeaker is a mass spring uh, mechanical system. It's got moving mass from the drivers. It's got air, which is the spring. Uh, it's got resonances. Uh, mechanically, this is what it looks like. But the amplifier, electrically, this is what it sees. Uh, so there's energy storage. Uh, power moves into the loudspeaker, and power moves back to the amplifier sometimes. Thank you, Mark. So in our next video, we're going to talk about different types of distortion. So we're back here with Mark Bonneville. So Mark, we were talking earlier about amplifier output power and distortion. So what is distortion and is there only one type of distortion? There are two main types of distortion. There's clipping and there's crossover distortion. So first let's look at clipping. So on the screen we have uh, in green, the output voltage from the amplifier, and in blue and yellow, we have the positive and negative power supply voltage rails. So as I crank up the uh, volume, the output goes up, and at some point it clips because it gets really close to the rails. Uh, and this is what it sounds like. But when the signal goes lower, the distortion disappears. And the good thing with clipping is it's only there when the signal is very large. When the signal you know, is reduced, then the clipping is gone. Is there any other types of clipping? There's also current clipping. So what I did here is I connected one ohm to the output instead of eight ohms, and that will require a lot more current from the amplifier. So if I turn it on, you can see that it's, it's, it's reaching a limit, and that's the limit of the amplifier in terms of current capability, which is about 35 amps but it's uh, really well behaved, there's no ringing, uh, it doesn't shut down, it just keeps going. The other type of distortion is crossover distortion, and that's uh, very bad. It happens when the signal transitions from the positive transistor to the negative transistor in a badly designed amplifier. And this is what it, it would look like. Uh, so at the zero crossing of the signal, you, get, you have a severe nonlinearity, and uh, it creates a lot of distortion. And the bad thing about it is, um, it's always there because whether the signal is soft or loud, the distortion is always there. And this is what it looks like without crossover distortion. So the signal is very clean, there's no discontinuity at the zero crossing. It's a pure tone and you can hear it in the loudspeaker. There is uh, no distortion present. So how would you avoid crossover distortion in your amplifier designs? You avoid it by having a well-designed output stage, including proper biasing and proper thermal tracking of the output devices. Thank you, Mark. So in our next and final segment, we're going to talk about two specifications that consumers often come across in amplifiers. Hey there. So we're back with Mark Bonneville. So, Mark, Two specifications that consumers often see are signal to noise ratio and gain. So 
Starting with signal to noise ratio, can you tell us a little bit about what that is? Yeah, the signal to noise ratio is measured first with applying a signal and measuring the output from the amplifier. The signal is turned off and the noise only is measured. And then the signal to noise ratio then is the ratio of the signal to the noise in the absence of the signal and that's measured in decibels. So is there a signal to noise ratio that a consumer should look out for? A good number would be 100 dB relative to one watt or 120 dB relative to full power. Uh, but the higher the number, the better. So now let's talk about gain. What does gain mean? Gain is a measurement of the output voltage relative to the input voltage expressed in decibels. So is there a typical gain figure that a consumer would see when looking at amplifiers? Yes, a very common figure is 29 dB. And that's because if you put one volt RMS on the input, you'll get 28.28 volts RMS on the output. If you do 20 log of that, of 28.28, you'll get 29 dB, and that's 100 watts. So thank you so much, Mark, for taking the time to show us around amplifiers today. You're welcome. And until next time, take care.